Hi everyone, welcome again. In the last video, we created a service discovery, basically a Eureka server using Spring Cloud Netflix. This is the home page of that Eureka server, which is running on 8090 port on our local machine. And we saw that there are no instances currently registered with this service registry. In this video, we will create a Eureka client, basically a microservice, which will register itself as a client with this service registry. And then we will see a very small example of how can we query service registry to get some information about the services registered with this Eureka server. So let's get started. To create a new microservice, we will use Spring Initializer. It will be a Maven project with Spring Boot 3. We'll change the group. The artifact name, so we will name it Eureka Client. We'll change the package. Then we need to add the dependencies because it's going to be a REST API. So we need to add the dependency for web. And for Eureka, we need to add this one discovery client. Let's generate the project. This has now been downloaded. So we'll open it with IntelliJ. The project has now been downloaded and I'm going to open it with IntelliJ. Let's give it a minute or two while it configures the project. In the meantime, we'll go back to the Eureka server which is running on our local machine on port 8090. All right, so the setup is complete now and we'll quickly scan the pom.xml. It has two basic dependencies, starter web and starter Eureka client. And in the main folder, we have the application properties. I'm going to rename it with YAML file. We can achieve the same thing with properties as well, but I'm going to use YAML for this one. And in the main folder, we have the main class which is annotated as Spring Boot application. That's it. Now, how do we start this microservice as a Eureka client? Well, the good thing is we have added this dependency in the pom.xml Eureka client. And due to this, when Spring Boot will scan the project, it will see that we want to create a new Eureka client. And so it will auto configure the project accordingly. The only thing that we need to do is we need to provide some information where this Eureka server is running. To do that, we'll add some properties in the ML file and for that we'll go to the documentation and here we see the properties related to the Eureka server. So I'm going to copy it and in the ML file we need to change the port because we know the Eureka server on the local machine is running on 8090. So that's the step number one. We have provided the information of that Eureka server. The next thing that we will do is we'll add the port, we'll change the port to zero. That means when we run a new instance of this API, Spring Boot will auto assign a random port to this API. We don't want to hard code it because we want to run multiple instances of the same service. And so we'll set the port as zero so that Spring Boot can auto assign a random value. All right. And to test the setup, we'll add a controller as well. So let's add the controller package. And in this package, we'll add a simple controller I controller we need to add the annotation rest controller then a simple method and get mapping annotation okay now if we run this client this microservice it will start one instance of this microservice and it will assign a random port to this api and if everything goes fine, this API will register itself as a client with the Eureka server, which is running on 8090 on our local machine. So the service is up now and along with it, we see that the discovery client has been initialized and we see some logs that it was registered with the Eureka server. So let's go back to the Eureka server and refresh the page. And we see one service registered with this Eureka server. The name is unknown and we see the status is up and the link is provided by the netflix eureka now what is this unknown the reason behind this is we have not provided a valid name to the service that we developed to do that we'll go back to the client and in the yaml file we need to provide a valid name so we'll name it my eureka client and if we restart this service and start it again
so the service is up and we see this time it is registering itself with the valid name which we provided in the application.properties file and if we refresh the page of eureka server this time we see the name my eureka client which we provided and if we click this url it is redirecting to actuator slash info endpoint and because we have not included actuator in the project and we are not exposing any actuator endpoints of course it will give us an error but now we can remove it and if we hit enter we see the hi it means the request was redirected to the controller to the api via eureka all right so let's try to run one more instance and let's see how the service will register itself with the eureka server so basically we are running two instances now so the second instance is also up and we'll go back to the eureka server this one and we'll refresh the page but we still see the status and the count which is one why so we are running two instances of this service but we still see the count as one well the reason behind this is we'll go back to the documentation again and in the documentation i'll scroll down to the correct section let me do that here we have not provided an instance id and by default whatever value spring boot has resolved it is basically using the same name or the same id for both the instances and so the second instance is overriding the first one or it is not accepting the second instance at all to do that we need to provide a valid instance id to make them unique so let me copy this one and we'll go back to this one instance instance id we'll add one more property what it will do it will fetch these values like spring.application.name which is this one and these values will be provided by the framework and finally a random value will be inserted to the instance id that will make this id unique so we'll stop both the instances and we'll start the service now so this is the first instance which is up now and we need to start the second instance as well this is also up and now we have two instances of the same service running and this time if you go back to the eureka server we should see count two so here we see there are two instances running of this application and eureka has configured some urls for both the services so we saw that both the instances successfully registered themselves with this discovery service and that's the responsibility of service registry to maintain the information of different services running in the system and once the service registry has those details anyone can query service registry to get some information about the microservice it can be a client it can be another service there's one last thing that we need to cover as part of this video so we'll see a quick way to query the discovery server which is the eureka server so we'll go back to the eureka client and i'm going to stop both the instances to do that we can use the discovery client this one and notice this is coming from the org spring framework there is one which is specific to netflix eureka but it's always the best practice to use the abstraction which is provided by the spring framework so use this one discovery client and this is auto configured we simply need to inject it auto wired and we can now use it we can fetch the information we can query the eureka server to get the information related to the services which have been registered with this eureka server so for example if we see the method we can get services we can get the description then we can get the instances by the service id so if we query this method we need to provide the service id and in this case the service id is this name so i'll just provide the service name and it returns a list so we can query this one and now we can access data points like get metadata get uri get port get service id for now let's print these details get uri get port get service id and what else get host 
and a separator okay so we'll start both the instances again and now when we call this controller it will print this additional information on the console this instance is running and we need to start this one as well both the instances basically so both the instances are up now let me clear the console and we'll go back to the eureka server so if we refresh the page we don't see any difference because there are still two instances running but this time we'll query one of the services if we go to this one and remove the actuator hit enter so we are basically calling the controller and it will execute the new code that we have written so if you go back to the console we see the data points that we printed this is the host this is the uri this is the port of the service this is the service id and this is the host and in the same way any client or any other microservice can query the discovery service to get the information of registered services or instances there's one thing that we have not covered in this video which is how to call this service as a client so a client should be able to call this service by the service name and internally the eureka server should redirect the calls to appropriate instances in the load balanced way so that is something we will see in later videos but that concludes our discussion on the service discovery and service registry with the help of spring cloud netflix that's all for now thanks for watching